Welcome to episode 21 of U1 Explains. This time we're going to take a look at Steve Hillich and the track The Glorious Om Riff. Let's do it. Before we start this episode, if you like my content, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button and ring that notification bell. It really means a lot to me. Thank you. Steve Hillich and Gong, they were a big thing back when I grew up, at least in my neck of the woods. But sadly, a lot of my friends and the people around me, they were on drugs. And the people that were heavily into drugs, they loved Steve Hillage and Gong. It was something about their music that just appealed to them. And that spoiled it, it ruined it for me. Because I was not into drugs, I thought it was a bad thing, and I saw what it did to my friends. And when I hear Steve Hillage and Gong, I kind of associated with all these bad things and bad things that happened to my friends. So it kind of ruined it for me. But let's not talk more about that because Gong and Steve Hillage, they wrote some fantastic music. So we're going to take a look at the glorious Omriff by Steve Hillage. But this is originally a Gong track. Uh, it was called Master Builder. Uh, but Steve Hillish thought it was interesting and wanted to keep on developing this idea, so he recorded it for his album Green. And this is the version that I'm going to talk about today. The album Green was released in April 1978. I was 17 years old. And this track, The Glorious Omriff, it is just spellbinding. It's just mesmerizing. It is just... I just love it. It's so interesting. And I don't know about you, but what makes it interesting to me is that there are multiple time signatures. There are odd time signatures and even time signatures. And there is a displacement of the one of the downbeat. There is also conflicting time signatures. And I think a lot of this stuff that is going on is because of the amazing drummer, Joe Blocker, uh, who I think is just phenomenal on this track. So let's do what we do on this channel, in this series. I'm going to do my playthrough and we can talk about it later. Thank you. 
So there you have it, my playthrough. And before we start talking about time signatures and different and clashing and, and displacement of the one, I know that some of you probably and some other people that back then said, okay, this is just 4-4. Four, four. They are right, and you might be right, because we have sections of this song or, or instrumentation of this song that is just played in 4-4, four, four. regardless of what's going on by the other musicians and or by the drummer. So the basic pattern, the riff, is in 4-4. Four, four. So let's just get that out of the way straight off the bat. However, what Joe Blocker, the drummer, plays is not 4-4. Four, four. Granted, you can still count 4-4, four, four, but it doesn't make sense to count it that way when you analyze what Joe Blocker is playing. Because counting that in, I'm going to show you uh, the metronome and, and, and you will see how weird it becomes if you start counting it 4-4, four, four, because he's clearly not playing 4-4. Four, four. So I'm going to show you exactly how to count this, which is really interesting. So here we are in Reaper, and I'm going to show you the ins and outs of this track. And the first thing I want to talk about is that... Do -do 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 -do. All right. So when I started recording this, I tried to remember, is that on a downbeat or is it not? So is it like... Do -do 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 -do. Or is it? Do, 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 do. And I was confused. And that's because they are both right. And that's because uh, we have that displaced downbeat, which shifts the one. And then this, da, 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 do, 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 it falls on different places on the grid. And I'm going to show you that. What I'm going to show you now is that thing that people say that this is just 4-4. Four, four. Well, the pattern is, yes, it's 4-4, four, four, but Joe Blocker is not playing 4-4. Four, four. So, if we have the metronome going, you can hear how weird that sounds. I'm going to show you, it sounds just crazy. Of course, you can count it like that, but it's not what Blocker is playing. So listen to the metronome and you will hear what I mean. This is good. Now. That is really odd, and it clearly does not reflect what Blocker is playing, right? So we have conflicting time signatures, which I think is interesting. So the pattern is 4-4, four, four, but Joe Blocker doesn't play 4-4. Four, four. So what is he doing? Well, he's actually doing three bars of 4-4, four, four, and then comes a 7-8, which leads into 6-8. And because we have 7-8, we have a displacement of the downbeat of the one and that's why the metronome sounds so weird to the six eight it should still work but it doesn't that's because the one is shifted one eight let's count together three bars of four four then seven eight and then we go into six eight okay <laughs> So I hope you heard that. And how do we get back? Because now we need to shift the one back again. So the first uh, four bars is really like 31 eighths because of that seven eight bar. Now we need 33 eighths to get back into the basic four four again. So how do we get back? How do we get back to the basic four four grid? Because we kind of shifted the one so we only had 31 eighths in the first four bars now to get back we need 33 to get back to the one again and how do we get 33 well it turns out 
it's not that hard. We have this 6-8 beat now going on. 6-8 time signature. And if you play that five times, five times six, six eights is 30. So we are three eights short. So we just add three eights after five six eights. So do dong do jack 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 one two three and then we're back. And that sounds also a bit corny, but that's how Joe Blocker does it. So let's try to count that together. So we have five bars of six eight and then one two three and then we're back. So that's how Joe Blocker does it. Three bars of 4-4, four, four, then 7-8, which leads into five bars of 6-8, and then 3-8, one bar of 3-8, to get back. So 31-8, the one is shifted, then 33-8, the one is shifted back, and then we can repeat. Rinse and repeat. But there are more things here that we can discuss. And one of them, when we grew up, we just loved Joe Blocker's intro fill, which is long. And he'd do the double kick and all that. And we just didn't get what he was doing. He does some things that is kind of normal first. He just... And then he does a double uh, bass pedal thing. And then suddenly it just explodes. Flop, 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 flop. And we were like, what is that? And we couldn't figure out what he was doing. We were severely undereducated back then, even if we were really interested in and some of, interested and some of us were talented. We couldn't get what Blocker was doing. But what he does is, is quintals. Uh, and when you get that, you you kind of well, that's what he does. So he does it. So uh, I try to mimic that a little bit in my playthrough. I don't know if you heard that, but I do the quintals. But I can't. I don't don't have a double bass pedal, so I I didn't do that. But I did the quintals, and and uh, I think that was pretty fun. So there you have it, the glorious Umriff by Steve Hillich. I hope you liked it. I hope it was a bit entertaining and that you liked my playthrough. And as usual, if you like my content, please hit that like and subscribe button and ring the notification bell. It really means a lot to me. Thanks for watching.